it's Laurie from the blog wagonwheelhomestead.com and welcome to my pantry. This is our canning pantry. It's really the hub on the wheel of our homestead as far as all the food is concerned. So this is where we put up most of our food. It's where we keep it. And from here then we are constantly drawing out of it for all of our cooking. I've had a lot of requests for this video and so I just wanted to bring you along and show you Everything I keep in my pantry, this is a 12 by 16 room that we put in our basement when we built our house and the floor is not heated, so it stays fairly cool. We do still need to add some vents to the outside, which will help keep it even cooler, but it is an insulated room in the corner of our basement. You could do a similar setup if you don't have a room in your basement, you could probably partition off a corner of your basement and you could use styrofoam. I've seen different people use styrofoam and just maybe some two by four walls, just something really simple to partition off a corner of your basement so it's not as heated to keep all of your canned foods. If you don't have that option, do not let that stop you from starting a bulk pantry. I had quite a warm basement for a long time in a house that we lived in previously because that's where the heater was located. It's the only place that I had to store my canned food and it stored just fine. It probably wasn't as ideal as somewhere that's a little bit cooler, but don't let not having the perfect setup stop you from starting. So I grew up canning when I was little girl and then when I started my own home after I got married. I learned how to can a lot of more things and I've slowly weeded out recipes we don't like over the years and added in things that we do until now we have a full working pantry that we could live off of for well over a year without having to go to the store. So I want to show you that. Groceries are very expensive nowadays and it's really important to know where your food comes from and to develop the skills to be able to feed your family without being dependent on the modern day food system. I'm really thankful we live in modern times. I'm so thankful we have the option of going to the store if needed and we go here and there, right? We're very glad that that's there. We're glad we have the option, but we're also very, very thankful on rainy days or during hard times to have our homestead pantry. Uh, if this looks overwhelming to you, I want you to know that I did not make this pantry and fill it in one year. This was over several years. And this may look overwhelming to you in that how do you learn how to do all this? I will show you. I'm gonna, through the next couple years on YouTube here, be showing you exactly how to make every single thing in my pantry. But I also wanna tell you that you don't have to learn it all at once. So just start with one thing. Learn how to can something simple like jelly. Learn about the process and then it will grow from there. So don't let this be overwhelming to you. I hope that it is an inspiration to you and I hope that you will ask me any questions that you have down in the comments so that I can uh, help you get started with your own homestead family pantry. So right here, I will try to show you each of these things and hopefully you can see. Right here is all of my bulk herbs and spices. So right here is some vanilla. I actually just started this the other day. This will set here for a few months and then we will have vanilla. So these are just vanilla beans that are soaked in vodka. There's lots of spices. I buy all of my spices in bulk. And one thing you can do when just starting a homestead pantry is to start buying your spices in bulk. This is cumin. I can get a pound of cumin, which is a little bit more than this in this jar, I can get a pound of cumin for not much more than I can get a little tiny container of cumin at the grocery store. So not only is it cheaper, but then I have it. I don't have to constantly be thinking, oh dear, I've got to go to the store. I don't have any cumin, right? That's not an issue once you get your pantry up and working. I have dill, mustard seed, so many things in here celery seed this is juice home canned plum juice so this is from wild plums that grow here in nebraska onion flakes i'm not going to go through every single thing in here because there's a lot and i'd have to dig clear to the back so if you have questions let me know i have stuff to make tea immune boosting tea in the fall and winter let's see turmeric 
chili powder, taco seasoning, peppermint tea, all my bulk herbs and spices, citric acid for making cheese, yeast for making bread. Now I make most everything with sourdough, but I do try to keep some yeast on hand for making bread. Uh, oregano. This is some lavender that I grew. I just haven't gotten it in jars yet. I'll tell you, I did a little straightening in here to show you the pantry today, but this is going to be a real life look at a real working pantry. We are always in here getting food. and I send the kids down to get jars of food and bring to me. So it's not always perfect, but it works really well and it saves us thousands of dollars. So I want you to know that it's, it's a real working pantry. And this is, this is what they look like. This is time. Okay. That also needs to be put into jars. All right, let's move on to some of the food. This is our favorite home canned vegetable soup. And I will share this recipe with you this fall when we have produce from the garden and I can show you how to can it. What we do is just brown some hamburger and dump a jar of this in and in less than 10 minutes you have an amazing soup. Serve it with sourdough bread and you're good to go. This is what we call fast food. And every time we make it, we think, man, why don't we eat this more often? It's so good. So we have lots of half gallon jars of that. We make it in half gallons for our family because we are a family of seven. Let me see what else I have in here. Garlic powder, onion powder, right? Uh, salt, pepper, those are the basics. It's really important to always remember to include salt in your food storage. I have back here a big bucket of salt, Redmond salt. All right, this is canned venison, okay? You can also can beef the same way. It's very, very simple, and I will show you that also. You just raw pack it into jars, and then you put some kidney fat from beef on top, pressure can it for, I believe, 90 minutes. I'd have to look it up, and there you have meat. This is really nice to have if you forget to thaw something out for supper, or what if your freezer goes out? right? We have canned meat. We can make lots of different things, soups, stews. You'll see me make beef and noodles with this a lot. It's super simple and super easy. Same thing with chicken, canned chicken. So if you stay in contact with people that have chickens, a lot of times they will have old hens that aren't laying anymore and they don't know what to do with them. They just eat feed and like, what do you do with them? So sometimes in the fall before winter, when they start to quit laying, you can find people that will give you their old hens and you cook it up and cook them up either in the oven or in a roaster, pull the meat off the bone, put it in here, pressure can it for again, I think 90 minutes. So it is, it does take a while, but this is so nice to have because you can make so many things with this canned chicken and it's easy and ready to have on hand. The other thing then that I do is I take the bones from the chicken, put them back in the roaster and turn it into rich, nourishing bone broth. And I can that as well. So back here in pints, I have all of my chicken broth. So I've got about 200 pints of chicken broth on the shelf because we happened to get uh, quite a few chickens this last fall from some people. And so I was able to make a lot of broth. So I won't have to do that every year, but um, definitely whenever you get the opportunity to make something in bulk and make a whole bunch of it, do it. There is way more food in this pantry than we could ever eat in a year. That's by design because we live in Nebraska. There's oftentimes hailstorms that come through. There can be late frost. There can be early frost. I had one time when the cows got in my garden in July and completely flattened it. It was so disappointing. I'll try to show you a picture. And it didn't matter because we still had so much in our pantry from prior years that it was okay even though we lost the whole garden that year that the cows got in. So canned food keeps a lot longer than you think it will. So, all right, let me see what's next. Let's finish this side. Okay, I have down here some potatoes. They are starting to sprout. I have my potatoes and my onions stored in here. These are my red onions. Red onions keep the best. So if you're planting your garden, definitely plan to plant some red onions for keeping. These are the yellow Spanish sweet onions. They also keep very well. You can see one is sprouting here. It is not a good idea to keep 
your potatoes and onions in the same room because they make each other sprout. But this is the coolest place that I have in my house. My house has uh, radiant in-floor heat from a wood boiler system, which is amazing, by the way. But everywhere else in my house is warm all the time, and I really don't have a good place to keep my potatoes and my onions. Eventually, we're going to build a root cellar, and I will probably keep my onions in here and my potatoes out in the root cellar or vice versa. For right now, this is the best I have, and I'm making it work. So my potatoes are starting to sprout, but we're using them fairly quickly for mashed potatoes. I even made baked potatoes the other day. Just break the sprouts off, put them in the oven, and they are just fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. So these are all potatoes. This is all things that we grew in our garden or purchased in bulk. So if it's a vegetable or a fruit that's in this pantry, we grew it here in our zone four garden in Nebraska. All right, I have a big box of canning lids. These are the four jars canning lids. I bought these on sale on Black Friday in preparation for this coming season. I also have a lot of empty jars that I need to bring back and put in here, but I didn't do it before I showed you this tour because it's harder to see everything when it's all packed full of empty jars. What we try to do is put empty jars back next to the same kind of jars that are full so that when it's time to refill the pantry, we can just say, okay, we need 25 quarts of salsa or whatever we need. We can just come see what we need, go outside, make the food in our canning kitchen, can it up, bring it in here and put it away for the coming winter. So. All right, come on down here with me. This is something new that I just made last year and I'm so excited about it. This is my apple cider vinegar. It's made, it's all organic, of course, made with the apple cores and peels off of the apples in our orchard. And you can see it has a really nice mother culture developing down below. This was made in September of last year. So we're excited about that. By the way, I will not use that apple cider vinegar for canning because I won't know the exact acidity level without testing it, but I can use it in cooking and medicinally. So it's really great to be able to make your own apple cider vinegar. This pantry tour is being done in the end of February. So we have been eating out of this pantry all winter and you can still see that there's an awful lot of food here to eat. We also use this room to store all of my soap making supplies and the soap and candles for my soap making business. So there's a lot of other things in this room. It's kind of the catch-all room. We also have buckets of dry goods stored. So I've got wheat, salt, oatmeal, cornmeal, millet, flour, lots of flour. We make lots of things from flour. Up here is some of my canning supplies. These are things that I've purchased. So there's olives, cashews, mustard, baking powder and baking soda, some pectin, some rice, some flour, different things, some mushrooms. These are, this is my juicer. Again, this is just kind of the catch-all room. Lots of different things in it. All right, up here we have pickled beets. These are amazing. My kids eat these so well. There's probably about 100 quarts of pickled beets here. Green beans, dilly beans, applesauce from our orchard, glazed carrots, and these are so cool. These are canned apples, and once you try these, you'll never look back. You'll never do apple pie filling again. We um, can these up after pressing them in sugar, and then you can add, put them in a cake, just as, you know, for an apple cake. You can use them as topping, or you can put a little cinnamon and flour with them, and you have apple pie ready in a jiffy. Okay, now I'm going to show you a lot of things made with tomatoes. If you're just starting out making a homestead pantry, starting out with a garden, I would strongly suggest that you start with tomatoes. There's nine things I believe in here that we make with tomatoes that we do not have to buy from the store. Tomatoes are easy to grow. So if I were you and I was starting out from scratch, I would definitely start by focusing on learning how to can tomatoes all these different ways 
and then branch out from there. So right here I have relish. This is sweet relish made out of cucumbers and zucchini. We use that for hamburgers and hot dogs. I make a cheeseburger pizza with it. I also use it in deviled eggs and potato salad. All right, here is home canned sauerkraut. So we made this with our own cabbage that we grew, turned it into sauerkraut, canned it so that we have shelf stable sauerkraut. We love fresh sauerkraut also, but this allows us to have sauerkraut all year long. We like to have it with hot dogs. You can also make a Reuben pizza with it. Lots of different things and a sausage and sauerkraut soup. There's lots of different things you can do with sauerkraut. This is V8 juice. So we made our homemade, own homemade V8 juice. Love it. This is pineapple zucchini. So this is zucchini canned in pineapple juice and you can use it like you would use pineapple, especially in cooking or in salads. So pineapple upside down cake, all of those different kinds of things. Works really well. This is our dill relish. I use this mainly for making cheeseburger pizza. You can use it in different recipes as well. This is tomato sauce. So whenever I have an excess of tomatoes and I really don't need spaghetti sauce and I'm not sure what to do with them all, sometimes I will just sauce them and can straight up tomato sauce because if I were to run out of spaghetti sauce or goulash sauce or any of those other things, pizza sauce, I could quickly make some if I had just regular tomato sauce canned with some salt. So that's what this is. These are our favorite banana pickles. They are so good. They're like a sweet, they're a very sweet pickle. Okay, this is goulash sauce. This is a family recipe, an heirloom recipe in our family. And it's one that we enjoy very much. We eat it with hamburger and macaroni noodles. You just pour this on, stir it up, put a little cheese on top. So good. Goulash sauce, ketchup. We make all of our own ketchup. And from ketchup, I make all my own barbecue sauce. So I use this as a sauce on cheeseburger pizza. I use it to make barbecue sauce for barbecue pizza. You can use it in meatloaf, so many things. You can use ketchup as a base for it, and it's not that hard to make. Really nice to have on hand. Tomato soup. I usually make my tomato soup from plain tomatoes or tomato sauce, but I have a few jars for when I need it really quick of just tomato soup. All right, stacker pickles for hamburgers. Tomatoes, plain tomatoes. This is one of the easiest things you can learn to can is just plain tomatoes. I'll show you how to do that this fall and you can make so many things from plain tomatoes. When I was a kid, we really didn't can a lot of prepared foods. We canned the basics. So plain tomatoes, plain green beans, plain peaches, those kinds of things, and we did really well with that. But I do like having some sauces pre-made. It just makes my life easier, especially with the big garden that we have and all the things that we're doing here on the homestead. But if you have plain tomatoes, you can do a lot with that. We use them a lot for chili. I already mentioned making tomato soup. Um, okay, this was something new we tried last year. This is a uh, canned coleslaw. So it's, a, it's actually still crisp. It tastes really good. Canned coleslaw is another way to get rid of some cabbage and carrots that we had an excess of in our garden. These are sweet dill pickles. They are also one of our favorite pickles. And I can show you how to can pickles so they are still crunchy. Super yummy. All right. This is salsa. Love, love our salsa recipe. It's so good and I'll share it with you. It has cumin in it and a nice mix of peppers and onions. And then I thicken it with a little bit of tomato paste so it's not just watery. So home canned salsa. Down here is my favorite Prego copycat spaghetti sauce. It is so good and I'll also show you how to make that this fall. So we usually use two jars of this at a time when we make spaghetti for our family of seven because we like to have leftovers for one meal. So lots of jars of this on the shelf. And pizza sauce. I did pizza sauce in pints. I don't can very many things in pints for my family because we have such a big family. 
but I do do the pizza sauce in pints because actually our favorite pizza is barbecue pizza. So we don't use this very often, but once in a while it's nice to make just a regular pizza or we sometimes make pizza rolls or pizza roll-ups. And then underneath I have some canners. Again, more dry food, some dry beans. Dry beans are a really good thing to have. My family doesn't love beans and rice. We keep some on hand because we could eat it in an emergency, but I don't make a lot with beans and rice. So if you don't like beans and rice, I would not suggest you buying 200 pounds of beans and rice and putting it in your pantry. Yes, it would help you in a time of starvation, but if you don't regularly cook with it and if you're not used to eating it and you don't know how to fix it, it's really not going to be that fun to eat. So I suggest that you put things in your pantry that you're actually going to eat. Make this a working pantry. Eat out of it. Learn how to cook with these things that are here so that in the event of an emergency or if you don't aren't able to get food from the store for whatever reason, you can just keep going right on as you normally would. I'll take you around to the other next aisle and I'll show you what else we have. Okay, so the middle section of this pantry is going to be the same, all the same all the way across. So I already showed you on the other side the tomato products and they come all the way across to here. So there won't be a whole lot for me to show you on this shelf. Here's the sauerkraut I made with some red cabbage in it. Isn't it pretty? All right. Here's our regular dill pickles out of cucumbers that we grew. I think I've got all this covered. I can quite a bit of syrup. This is sand cherry syrup. You can make choke cherry syrup. These all grow wild here in Nebraska. Plum syrup. We also make jelly out of all those same things. We had a bumper crop from our grape harvest last year. And so we have 140 quarts of grape juice concentrate. So you dilute this one to one with water and a little bit of sugar and you have organic grape juice to drink. You can also take this and make jelly. So oftentimes in the busy canning season, I don't get things like jelly made. I wait and do that in the winter. If I can just can it up as juice and then have it for to do different things with, that's usually what I try to do. We have pears. These are pears we grew off of our pear trees. I also have some plain carrots back there. And then I store, then I store a lot of squash and pumpkins that we grow here in our pantry. So this is butternut squash. These are sugar pie pumpkins. We had quite a bit of delicata squash and buttercup squash, but those do not keep as long. So I don't have any of that now at the end of February, but as you can see, there's plenty of food in here to last us a very long time. So we have slowly gotten to the point where the things that we purchase at the store, the, that list is much smaller than the things that we have here on our homestead. And it's made such a difference in our grocery budget. We've just finished a 60 day pantry challenge where we have eaten nothing from the store for 60 days. And you can't even really tell that we've made a dent. So every year now what I, will do is just keep this full and if we get a year where it's an early frost or we get hailed out then we just won't put up as much food that year if any and the following year we will make up for it by putting up excess whenever we can so I hope that this has been inspiring to you and I hope that you will follow along like and subscribe our to our channel so that I can show you how I use all of this in our cooking, all the different things that we make. We do not eat this the same foods every day. It's not a boring diet that we eat at all. So we also have three freezers. We have beef, venison. We put up all of our corn in the freezer, broccoli and cauliflower in the freezer, 
corn and broccoli and cauliflower are not very good canned. But we try to can what, whatever we possibly can because if we were to lose our freezers, we hate to have all of our food in freezers. Plus, it continually takes electricity to keep those freezers running. So we try to can as much as we can. Um, I also keep some tallow in the freezer. Sometimes I have it some shelf-stable canned tallow that we've made here as well. So that's where we get all of our oil from. We do not produce our own wheat for flour. I purchase my flour still. I do grind some of my own wheat and so that's why I do have wheat in buckets because it's just a wise thing in case you weren't able to get flour. Uh, we also have to buy our own sugar at this point. We do not have maple trees close by. I don't have a way to tap them and we don't have bees yet. But those are things that may come in the future. So stick around and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions on any of this. I'd be glad to share with you how you can live without having to go to the grocery store. So thanks for coming along.